Hello, everybody. Season 4, Episode 22, the Green Effect Podcast, live on the air. All right, so I was off last week. It was a long weekend. I mean, it seems like so far ago, but it was a long weekend. I took a week off, whatever. All right. I find that it's been really busy for me lately, and I, I do a lot of social media content, so that starts to take up a little bit more of my time, but the podcast is so important for people who listen to it. I got to make sure I prioritize to get back on that horse as much as possible. So, um, so yeah, so back at it this week. The last couple of weeks, um, we haven't had like other than employment numbers, we really haven't had like anything crazy come out uh, that's really shifting the market and stuff like that. So I'm going to go through um, just really notable things that you have to know. Okay, if you are business, finance, your more whatever, right? These are things you just need to know about. All right. So let's break it down. What is on my laundry list of shit I got to talk about here? Oh boy. We're, oh, employment. Let's talk about the unemployment report. Yes. So, all right. So unemployment report was completely uneventful, which you know what? I'll, I'll be honest with you with the way the economy is sometimes the, the less eventful things are the better. You know what I mean? Like if stuff comes up, it's like, man, do I really want to have to deal with this? How does it impact? So job report came out, uh, did not change at all. Okay, still 6.4%. Now, it did technically uh, drop 2,800 jobs, but that's just not enough to move the dial at all. Okay, so there wasn't a whole lot in the report. There were two things that I need to mention relative to employment. One came out of the report and one is just a totally separate article stat that came out, okay? So probably the biggest concern is the unemployment rate for young people, okay? And I'm describing my stats here. Uh, do, 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 bear with me. Yeah, summer students. So remember back in the day, okay, you go to school all year long, and you get a summer job, right? People are on vacations, sports camps. I remember I worked for uh, Scarborough Parks and Rec for people who are from Scarborough originally or for Scarborough Parks and Rec. I actually, so funny story. Um, I actually worked for the, I forget what they called the division, but it was basically the, they called them the iron butterflies. And it was all the kids who were in wheelchairs. And I'm telling you, man, crazy crazy stuff you learn. Um, it actually makes you feel really, uh, what was the right word? Not special. Um, really lucky. Okay. That you're able to, um, you know, that, that, that you don't have to be in a wheelchair. Right. And so when you see these kids, it was, it was so rewarding for me because it was like, you know, these kids in wheelchairs are trying to make up a great experience. You have a lot of it, but totally different. It's not the same as a regular summer camp at all for super obvious reasons. Right. Um, listen, I was like 18 and I was changing adult diapers. Like that's the kind of appreciation you get for it. So, um, anyway, so back in the day you get a summer job, right? Well, this time around, not so much. There's just not a lot of summer jobs out there. Okay. So in June, which is when a lot of the jobs start, that unemployment rate was almost 14%. Okay. Those are, those are students who are willing to work. And just simply cannot find a job. Like willing to work is really important. Okay. So why is that happening? Well, I may have a bit of an answer. And it's probably twofold. One part is the fact that the economy is just slower. Okay. We all know that, right? Everyone thinks, listen, we're in a recession. Okay. We are but it's being propped up by immigration. So let's not kid ourselves. The only thing that's actually not changing the official label to recession is the liberal government bringing in people by the plane loads, okay? So like we're in a recession, except for the crazy immigration, which we're gonna come to, come to right now, actually. So part of it is the, is the economy. The other part of it though is something that's really scary. Like, I mean, really scary. So I was on TikTok today because, you know, what else do you do most of your day? And I would encourage you to go to this website, lmiamap.ca. lmiamap.ca. 
CA. And this is, oh my goodness, what is MLI? One sec, LMIA. Um, I just got to get the, the crap. Uh, a labor, mar uh, labor market impact assessment. So if you're an employer, you can file an LMIA, labor market impact assessment with the government, to be able to hire a foreign worker. And there's great benefits with hiring foreign workers. For the most part, they don't have real high expectations. Uh, they don't make as much. And there's government subsidies for it. Pretty cool. So why would you hire a student temporarily if you're going to hire a foreign worker? Now, here's the thing. You get this MLI, M L M I A done. You're only doing that because apparently you can't fill this job with anybody else. Any other Canadian cannot do these jobs. So if you go to lmiamap.ca, this individual just simply built a website and shows who has filed LMIAs and the, and the occupations. So let's have a look here. I'm just reading off my screen. So a lot of Ontario and Canada incorporated numbers, which makes sense. But look at the occupations, food, tile setter, machine tool operator, cooks, whatever cook is. A cook could be an actual professional chef, right? Food service supervisor, light duty cleaner. There's no other Canadian for this. Help me understand. Food service, retail sales. These are, most of these are all Ontario incorporated numbers. I don't know what, what businesses they are, these are. Oh, here we go. Now we're getting into, oh, so apparently Chuck's Roadhouse has jobs available in Kitchener, Waterloo. There's only one. That's easy to find out. Restaurant and food service manager. There's no other Canadian that can fill that job right now. Who else do we have? I'm just going through some of these companies. That's crazy. Lady Glaze Donut. Bakers. There's no other bakers in Canada, Ontario. I'm just looking for other companies here. This is insane. Software engineers, computer programmers, food, a lot of food service, man. Oh, here's, okay, this is interesting. So the, here, here's, okay, here's an interesting one. So Schlegel Villages Incorporated is looking for licensed practical nurses, which is kind of crazy because we have a shortage of those. That kind of makes sense. Sad because we don't have enough. That makes a little more sense. Licensed practical nurse, absolutely. Right? Food service supervisors. This is nuts. Like, so anyway, so where I'm going with this is, yeah, that that the, this, that that population of students is having trouble because why would you bother if you can get a foreign temporary worker to fill this void? Okay. So coming back to the unemployment numbers. Okay, that's what's going, that's the story behind the unemployment numbers. And, you know, people are asking me too, like, what is CRA going to do with this? And the answer is, or sorry, CRA, my goodness, that's my next art. That's the next thing I'm going to talk about. What is Tiffy Boy and Bank of Canada going to do with this data? Like nothing. Okay. Didn't change. It's a wash. It's not good. It's not bad. Don't care. Right. No change. Fine. Didn't go up, didn't go down, move it on with life. All right. Now. We can't say the federal, another little point to unemployment. We can't say the federal government's not helping or governments in general. Okay. Because here's a funny story. This is going to blow your mind. A quarter of employed Canadians now work for the government. Holy crap. That is insane. Now, why do we care? Okay. Why do we care? Well, it's kind of a self-fulfilling self, self prophecy where it's like the more people we got working for the government, the more, ta I mean, arguably, the more tax we're going to have to pay on this, right? And, and honestly, do we actually need that many people working for the government? You got to remember, too, it's like you got this, you got, you got all these people working for the government and you have, you have much fewer business owners and entrepreneurship, right? And I guess working for the government's a great job. I don't know what the what the 
uh, potential for moving up is. Um, I can tell you one thing, one thing in government we got way too many of is at CRA. Okay. What was, and I might be wrong here, so please fact check me. All right. Uh, we have something like 10 times the number of CRA employees in IRS in the US. And of course, they have 10 times the population. Draw me a diagram how that makes any friggin' sense. Okay. Now I know CRA is going after everybody for their 20 bucks. I know that. But for real? So, you know, when you hear these governments, federal government, provincial government, and they're like, yeah, we're, you know, one part of the, um, part of their platform is to um, pare back government size and employees. Sign me up for that guy. Like, seriously, we, there's just way too many. We don't need this many employees working at the government. We just don't. Right. So that, that all comes down to the employment report where, you know, again, pretty much a wash, but, you know, students are at risk here big time. They, they are like it's done because summer's almost done now. And that was a that was a July. Uh, sorry. Yeah, that was a July report. OK. Um, and then this whole temporary worker thing. And, you know, like, like I'll talk about immigration one more time. I mentioned this at the beginning of the show where recession wise we're in a recession but the reason why it's not labeled that is we're, we still have so, such high immigration it is insane how much immigration we have like it's off the charts right um I, I just don't see it slowing down i can't wait to see some of the data to show what the actual immigration numbers look like like though it's just going to be insane okay okay what else is going on in our world right now all right, so this, I'll just talk about this briefly because this is actually kind of important, but not important until something actually happens. All right, so we have um, a banking regulator, okay? And I've you've heard me talk about them so affectionately before, the Office of the Superintendent of Financial Institutions, all right? And what they're basically there for is to monitor, guide, add rules nobody likes but some actually work all right so when you hear about you know amortizations being re reduced to 25 years um uh restrictions on uh net worth like all sorts of different mortgage rules that come up it's from them but the banks aren't going to do it they'll just keep lending money until the cows come home but uh, we need you need someone to babysit the banks or the lenders in general so that's what osfi does all right now if I can just paraphrase what has happened, uh, they have minimums the banks have to keep for cash. So you got to remember, when you put money into your bank account, the bank just, it doesn't just sit there. They take it and they lend it out. That's what they do. It's, it's all got to be backed by assets. So you do a mortgage for 200 grand, they got to have not literally this, but pretty much 200,000 to back it up or a percentage of it in case the loan goes bad, right? So they were going to uh, begin or increase, uh, let me just see here. Yeah, so they were, they were actually going to add in an additional um, minimum amount to manage the risk. Okay, they call it a capital amount. So if you're holding money, it's capital. They were gonna introduce minimums for capital requirements for institutions. And they've since delayed that. Why do you ask? Because the economy is going to shit, right? So well, apparently the horse is dead. We don't need to beat the dead horse a little bit more. All right. It's just easier now. So so they just backed off, which is fine. That makes sense. It didn't make huge news, um, but they're definitely, um, they're definitely backing off on that minimum requirement. So that's good. That's good from the standpoint that we're already kind of messed up with the economy. Do we need more? Probably not. All right. Okay. What else did I want to talk about? Okay. So um, next Bank of Canada announcement is in September. Okay. So it's like where they get August off sort of thing, which is fine. Uh, what are we seeing in the market right now? I'll give that quick update. Um, so months of inventory. I have posted about this on social media quite a bit. Quite a bit. Uh, months of inventory is up. All right. So again, let me explain this. 
months of inventory is if we stopped listing houses on the respective board today, how long would it take to sell out what was there? Okay. So at the height of our market, we were like 10 days of inventory. That was unheard of. That was, in, that was crazy stuff. Now we're back to more of probably a, um, more of a balanced type market. Okay. Where we're around three months of inventory. London St. Thomas is over four now. Okay. So let, let me, let me answer this question for everybody. Cause everyone always asks me, should I buy now? Should I buy later? What's going on? Right. And here's the answer. Yeah, we're seeing some fixed rates come down, but, 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 but we don't know what's going to happen. Okay. I talked to a client this morning. Every indication is rates are coming down, but if anything's taught us, if, if we've learned anything from what's gone on, it doesn't take much to really uh, mess up the course that we were going. Don't forget, we were supposed to have really low rates by the end of last year. Yeah, it didn't happen, did it? Right? So we kind of plan, we make choices and move on. So to answer that question, you know, should I buy now or, or whatever? The answer is, again, if you can afford it, if you are emotionally ready, then go for it. As long as you're ready, right? If, if you if you can't afford it, if it's putting you in a bad spot, don't, right? But if you can survive these rates, if, if you can survive the, 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 the price of homes, which really hasn't moved too, too much, you have an opportunity to buy a house right now with five days on financing condition, five days on inspection, and just take your time and do what you got to do, right? The second rates substantially come down. And I think that that yardstick is really around when Bank of Canada gets that overnight rate down a full percent, we're only half a percent right now, but a full percent. That's when I think shit's going to start to light up, right? Because that's substantial. And, and what we're seeing now with months of inventory, listen, I know if months of inventory is three months, it's actually really four because there's a lot of people just not selling right now. They're just waiting. Let's just see what happens, right? My mortgage is bigger. Um... My rate is really good. I don't want to lose the rate. Okay. So we see those comments from people. So, you know, I, I'm telling you right now, it's, um, if you have a single family, and this leads me into my final topic. If you have a single family home, you have a crazy good asset. It's an asset that in the next few years, you have something like gold, something that few people have. All right. So this is why I'm saying buy if you can and you are ready. Don't rush out and buy something you're not ready for. But if you can afford something, then buy something, right? Because I'm telling you, in a year or two when rates are lower and everyone's complaining that, oh my God, I got to go firm on my offers, too many offers because immigration is so high, et cetera, et cetera. I told you so. Episode 22, season four right here. Leads me to my final item. 30-year amortizations for first-time home buyers, less than 20% down on new builds. What a crock of shit. Do I have to go anymore? I think I'm done. That's it. Can I just end it right there? A crock of shit. Now, don't misunderstand me. Anything that helps a first-time home buyer, eh, c'est la vie. Let's do it. Okay? Sorry, there's a plane going by my house right now. I have the window open. It's beautiful weather. Um, I'll just talk louder, but here's the problem. Okay. I, I got, I got big problems with this. A lot of people on social media use it for what it is. It is a positive. Is this going to set our world on fire? Am I going to have buyers come to me and say, holy crap, I can do a 30 year am on a new build. Sign me up. No, no, not even close. Here's the thing, guys. I have posted this multiple times on social media. A few, a few stats. Single family housing, way down. There, no one's building the damn things. Forward leading indicator such as building permits, way down. Who's building single family homes right now? Nobody. Why bother? Rentals are up, condos are up. You know, condos where nobody wants to live outside the GTA. Yeah, fantastic. They're building lots of condos. So. And, oh, and one more thing, D 
didn't we just finish people buying houses and condos as new builds with a one or two year window to possibly close and say, well, hey, when you, you know, when you buy a new house, you're buying it on speculation. So maybe you shouldn't buy a brand new house if you can't afford it. So we're going to take first time home buyers, never bought a house before, put them in a risky investment. They got to wait a year or two. Hope the hell the value doesn't drop. Even though we just finished telling them don't buy on speculation, dude, what are we even doing? And, and I had, uh, I had one of my agents on uh, a few weeks ago, all right? He's like, his generation, which is like Gen Z, they don't want condos. Keep your damn condos. They don't want them. They want the single family homes. The ones that we aren't buying, the ones that we're not building. So help me understand other than trying to keep a few builders happy, because I'm sure they're looking at this saying this is bullshit, right? Why did you even bother introducing this? Other than if you're Christia Freeland, JT, and that freaking, the freak show up in Ottawa right now, wanting to get people talking about housing. Help me understand. Again, hey, if one or two, I heard this, I heard this comment. Someone said, well, hey, if a few first-time homebuyers get a house, that's great. Perfect. Why do we have so much advertisement and so much wonderfulness and how amazing the Canadian government is for introducing this? It's going to help three friggin' people. Help me. Help me help you, please. All right, that's enough. Don't get me started in this 30-year amortization. Um, I don't have to talk much more about it. I think you understand my passion around the bullshit. Oh, I'm in a bad mood now. I'm in a bad mood. I'm going to work on some applications. Um, let's end it with, that's it for now. I may not have a podcast next week. Okay. Uh, I am away for a bit, so I might not be anywhere where there's a good microphone. Uh, I don't know if the microphone makes a friggin' difference, but Hey, here we are. Um, but anyway, if there's not, you guys know, follow me on social media. I, and, and one thing I, I got some really good feedback on my podcast. Someone said, I got to mention more about my social media. Okay. They're like, man, we love the podcast, but mention more about your social media on your podcast. So if that person is listening and she knows who she is, this one's for you. Uh, social media, SG mortgage advice on all the, all the social media, uh, handles except for Twitter. I don't go on Twitter. Seriously, if you guys are looking for me on Twitter, you're going to be sadly disappointed. Okay. Sadly disappointed is an oxymoron. You're going to be disappointed. Okay. All right. That's it. Let's end it there because it's going nowhere now. Um, like me, love me, follow me, want me, desire me. Okay. Five stars. Please. Five stars. Subscribe, share. Come on, man. Get out. Get the word out. Right. Tell people about how wonderful this podcast is. Other than that, follow me on social media. Until next time. Talk to you soon.